Eve Online players have played as pirates for years. And finally, they'll be able to do that a bit more legitimately. Just like players have been able to enlist in faction warfare with an empire of their choice, be it Kaldari, Galenti, Amar, or Minmatar, you will be able to enlist with a pirate faction of your choice. This will be either the Garistus or the Angels Cartel. The Garistus are going to be going to war, raiding the space uh, that has been destabilized in the Kaldari Galenti war zone. And on the other side of the universe, the Angels are doing much the same thing raiding into the space that has been disturbed by the ongoing war between the Amar and the Minmatar. During these insurgencies, uh, the pirate factions will deploy a forward operating base into the space, from which they'll begin to raid the space around them. As they raid the space, they will attempt to attack corporate outposts, harass mining fleets, and so on. The more crimes that those pirates commit, the more the crime level goes up in the system. This is what we're calling corruption. On the flip side, the Empire militias who are attempting to control that space can act as law enforcement, and they're looking to stop these pirate raids. In order to do this, as they fight off the pirates, they will increase the law enforcement level uh, in the system, which we are calling suppression. As corruption increases in the system, uh, the effects in the system will become cumulative. Uh, as more crimes happen, law and order begins to break down, and that's roughly what corruption is attempting to simulate. Corruption is, in a sense, good for the pirates. Uh, they revel in it, so to speak. Uh, as corruption in the system increases, it will grant various bonuses to the space that will alter the nature of the space uh, while that corruption level is elevated. Uh, these can range from relatively simple effects, such as players dropping more loot when they explode, or more complicated effects, uh, such as uh, the system almost dropping in a security status. Dropping in a security status at maximum corruption is a tricky thing. This is a bit of a challenge for us. We've already had a security status of the space uh, that they were attacking. Pirates will be able to do the same thing when they can push corruption to the maximum level. For a low sec system that has reached maximum corruption, that system will begin to feel more like NullSec. We'll accomplish this with a simple package of effects, which allows the use of interdiction uh, bubble launchers, bomb launchers, and heavy interdiction bubbles. These three key items are really what tends to separate the feeling of low security space from the feeling of null security space. It is only these three things that become active. All of the rest of the rules that apply to low security space still apply, which makes this rule set a little bit more lightweight and easy for us to deploy to systems uh, dynamically through these insurgencies as we need to. Similarly, for a high sec system, uh, as the corruption level increases in that system, a high sec system, when it reaches maximum level, may begin to feel more like a low sec system. And we accomplish this by simply making aggression against a player ship uh, result in only a sus suspect timer and not a criminal timer. Uh, Concord only responds to criminal timers, and so that means that they will not come after you if you shoot a player ship, but players will be able to respond. This is a bit more like low sec. However, criminal timers are still possible. If you attack a capsule of a player, for example, which also in low sec generates a criminal timer, then Concord will still respond, making these corrupted high sec systems feel even a bit more different uh, than low sec. They are kind of a very unique type of space. On the flip side, as suppression increases, we also wanted to make that feel uniquely impactful in the same way that corruption does. And suppression being the law enforcement of a system, we are largely seeking for that to feel more secure. As the militia players complete activities and they increase the suppression of a system, uh, there will also be a different set of effects that suppression can apply. And note that these are not mutually exclusive. We could have level five suppression and level five corruption effects in a system at the same exact time. Suppression is the law enforcement effect on a system, um, just how well locked down the system is. It is the suppression of free movement and everything else that the criminals make use of. As suppression increases, various things will happen. Uh, Concord will start paying a little bit more for pirate bounties in those systems. The militias will get bonuses, even including the possibility of 
fairly potent PvP bonuses, such as an increase to web and scram range, which will really change the nature of PvP in these systems. And at level 5, they'll even secure gates and stations more than they normally would be. When suppression hits level 5, the security forces in the system will attempt to uh, lock down the system. And they'll do this by deploying upgraded sentry guns to gates and stations in the system to make travel a little bit safer for law-abiding citizens. These upgraded sentry guns will be quite aggressive uh, at punishing criminal behavior, and they hit a lot harder than your standard sentry gun. Um, so the goal here being it's really hard to actually gate camp these systems if these sentry guns have been put in place. As systems are fully corrupted, the pirates will score a point towards their progress in the insurgency. And as systems are fully suppressed, the militia factions will score a point towards their side in the insurgency. When the anti-pirate factions have reached their target point value, then the pirate FOB will become vulnerable. Similar to upwell structures, this has a single reinforcement timer. Uh, so players will have to shoot the shields and then return to destroy the structure, giving pirates a last-ditch chance to attempt to protect it. On the pirate side, if they hit their goal, they pack up their loot and leave. This corruption will also begin to spread. These systems which the pirates are attacking, those systems that are under active insurgency, will grow naturally. As you as a pirate player increase the corruption of the system, it will reach the spread threshold. When the spread threshold is reached for an individual system, it will preferentially spread adjacent to that system if it can. If it can't spread from that system, then it will still spread, but it will be adjacent to another system in the insurgency zone. So you always wind up with a contiguous set of systems which, is, which are in the insurgency, which is the dynamic war zone that we've looked to create. What we were really trying to do with this was create a system where Unlike faction warfare, where the set of systems in uh, the war zone are very static, we wanted to see what it would be like to create a war zone which uh, naturally changed over time and was a bit more flexible and a bit different every time it spawned, uh, making a lot of use of local geography to make it particularly unique and interesting. The other thing that we really wanted to accomplish with these insurgencies is we wanted to create a, a war feature that was discrete. In faction warfare right now, uh, that is an eternal war. Those players are going to push and pull on those systems uh, probably until the end of time. But with the insurgency system, uh, a set of system spawns, points are pushed up towards uh, completion, and once one faction has won, they get a bonus for winning, and then the insurgency ends. When insurgency starts, it will choose a system where the FOB will spawn. Once it's chosen a system where the FOB will spawn, it then chooses the initial set of systems that will have insurgency content. Those will be the systems that players will need to compete over first when it becomes active. However, when the FOB is originally placed, the insurgency is in a forecasting state. Uh, the pirates are still setting up, the raid hasn't started, the security forces haven't been able to bust down the door yet. This is the period where we let you as the player know where the insurgency is going to be, giving you a, t a chance to get your ships into position or out of, out of harm's way, uh, depending on what, how you want to interact with it, before the actual insurgency begins. In the war zone, the insurgency is intended to be a destabilizing force. If the pirate factions are unequal, uh, then eventually we will likely see that one side being uh, losing most of their space uh, with the other side being particularly dominant. The insurgency is meant to come in and disrupt that. When one faction has more systems, the insurgency will prefer to attack that uh, faction space. And if the pirates are successful in their insurgency, they will actually steal a system from the faction when they do. When that system is stolen, the pirates will have sovereign ownership of it for a limited period of time until they decide to focus elsewhere and they simply let it go. When they let that system go, it will return to its previous owner. However, it returns to the previous owner with very little control over the system as the iHub will be vulnerable to attack immediately by the opposing faction. So if the owning faction wants to re-secure that system, they will need to defend that iHub and plex the system back down. If you decide to align with the pirate faction, there are a number of great rewards in store for you. Both factions have brand new LP stores with rewards that are only available from insurgency content. The Angels have the new Azariel, 
the Angel Faction Titan, which is truly beautiful. And in the Garistus LP store, you can find all of the Garistus Capital Blueprints, Subcapital Blueprints, Garistus Skins, and more. With the Pirate Insurgencies, we've intentionally designed the system to be open and sandboxy and dynamic and interesting, and I can't wait to see what you do with it and what stories you make.